Hello and welcome back to my van build. This week there's going to be some video at the beginning where I'm saying I'm doing my garage and my floor at the same time and this video is strictly going to be building out my garage. I was pretty ambitious with my projects and the fact that I'm actually going to be moving this week so I may kind of like jump all over the place in the beginning with this but it's just going to be my garage and then walking through a few new tools that I've got. It's a fun one, it's a good one, it's really exciting because I'm finally starting to design and build out everything rather than just doing like the prerequisites to get everything ready for building. So let's get into this week's video. Okay, so next big project is building the garage and laying the floor. I am actually moving out of my place in three days. My garage is going to be my first big building project and I'm kind of want to do it that way because of the videos that I've been following by Linnea and Akila. She did her project that way and I actually think it's really smart because if I have any design issues or measuring issues, it'll be in the spot that is seen the least. I'm also gonna be trying staining for the first time and just getting the rough build figured out for this whole van. It's actually gonna be a little bit tricky for me because I'm gonna be doing a half stationary bed and then half of it folds down. It's gonna be very similar to Eamon and Beck's second build on their van, which I'll link down below, where half of the bed is going to be fixed and then the other end of it that's closest to the kitchen is going to fold down and be the backrest for a seating area. There are some specific measurements that I have to get right. So the garage is going to be designed so that the bed will fit on top of it. All of these measurements I've been really trying to work out on paper and I'm pretty sure I've got it down. Something that I've been thinking about recently is you know accounting for the width of your plywood, accounting for the size of the cushioning that I'm gonna be having on the seating. I'm doing my best to figure it out, but basically I feel like I just need to start this project. My main goal is to get the measurements for the garage walls, which are going to go across here, and then the boxes I'm going to make for the wheel well. It's gonna actually be 38 inches across for the wheel well. It's the size of my twin bed that I have right now. So it actually doesn't cover the entire wheel well, but what's gonna happen is that the wall will stop probably about right here and then the wheel well box will be completely covered, but the other half of the wheel well is going to be underneath the seating area. I'm gonna to refer to my design plans and then I'm kind of just gonna do a rough estimate for the walls since it's gonna be covered up by the wheel well boxes. I don't think that the, the curve has to be exactly perfect. It just needs to fit good enough. This is like kind of my rough design from an aerial view looking down on the van. These are the wheel well boxes that I'm going to make. This is gonna be the fixed bed part. And then this dotted line right here is gonna be the part of the bed that swings down. So this is looking in from the sliding door. You can see here, this is where the fixed bed part's gonna be. This is the part where it swings down. This is the wheel well box. And then this extra part coming out, this is gonna be the seating area. The part of the garage wall that I'm gonna be making is this piece here that will curve around on the wheel well and then I'll eventually make the wheel well box. I feel like I should probably do the cuts first and then stain, but I would like for this stuff to get dry today and then do the cuts later this evening and then I can just restain the sides that I cut. I'm gonna be using three quarter inch ply again, um, the same type of wood I use for the subfloor and I have a little extra piece from when I did the subfloor that I'm gonna test the stain that I got on just to make sure I like it. It's a little bit warmer of a color than I was expecting, but I'm gonna go compare it to my floor and see if I like how it goes together. It's definitely more orangey, but I'm honestly not too upset with it. My color scheme for my whole van is gonna be like brown, orange, cream, and then like accents of yellow and blue. So. I'm gonna just go with it. You wanna make sure that you go with the grain of the wood that you're staining. Also, you're supposed to sand your wood down, but this plywood's actually like super soft, so I'm just gonna stain it as it is. All right, now while I wait for this to dry, I'm gonna measure out the dimensions I need for my garage. So the tools that I'm gonna need for my garage installation project is one three-quarter inch plywood sheet. Uh, mine's four by eight feet. 
and I also bought a Craig jig so that I could start doing pocket hole drilling because I'm going to be doing my own cabinetry at some point and so I'm going to need it anyway and I've heard really good things about them making woodworking a lot easier. I think those are the only things that I actually need for the garage installation. Right here is where my fixed bed is going to end. Well I kind of screwed this up because I made this too big and I think what I'm just gonna end up doing is I'll just make a larger wheel well box on this side but I'm definitely gonna try to measure more accurately on the other side it's okay we make mistakes and then we just work with what we got or we can go buy more wood but I swear to god if I go back to Home Depot one more time this week this day honestly I've gone to Home Depot four times in the last 24 hours and I do not want to go back there today <laughs> This one obviously looks a lot better than the first one. Now I'm going to make the wheel well boxes. They're obviously going to be two different sizes because the one on the left side needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll bust out the Craig jig and use it for the first time. It turns out that I am going to need, either need another piece of plywood or I'm going to have to use this old plywood that I have. And I was looking at it and it kind of has some mold on it and I'm kind of just like and it's not the same type as this so it would look different and I'm trying to debate if I should just go the cheap option and use it and sand it or if I should just go buy another sheet of plywood plywood's just so expensive right now and I don't know if I go buy it then maybe I'll go and replace that piece that I kind of screwed up and I might even get a darker stain to make it more of like a walnut finish rather than this orange finish. I'm feeling super off today because I just spent a bunch of money buying all of my solar panel stuff. And it just feels like, I don't know, I have a lot of anxiety from it. So I'm kind of wondering to myself if I should just call it quits and chill, but I kind of want to get this project going because I am really strapped for time right now. Foxes on foxes and rainbows on kittens. Me losing my mind while building my garage. Okay, so here's the deal. I think I was being extremely anxious earlier and just got super carried away with moving too quickly and I need to redo some of my cuts. Like, it's just making everything really difficult the size as I did everything and so I'm gonna keep the one wheel well wall that's really good and I'm gonna keep some of the other pieces but I'm just gonna go back to Home Depot and I'm gonna get another piece of plywood and I'm gonna redo it and I think I'm gonna get a slightly darker stain so that it's not as orange but first I am going to eat lunch and I'm gonna chill out for a little bit because I think that I'm just getting really ahead of myself today so not every day is gonna go according to plan and I need to be flexible and so if you're building out a van or going through anything right now just know that being patient is really important within the process of doing anything. Rushing, I mean we know what happened last time with my subfloor stuff. I ended up making a bunch of hasty cuts and I'd like to say I learned from my mistakes the first time, but you know, I think our anxiety can drive us to do things when we're not thinking rationally. So just remember to be patient with your projects, your life, yourself, anything that's going on that you're really wanting to get done now. There will always be time to get it done later. Okay, I got another type of stain. I'm gonna try it out on one of these pieces that I've already cut and see how it looks over the stain that I used and see if I like them combined or I might just end up flipping the pieces over that I'm gonna use from the last panel and just restain everything. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with the walnut. Okay. 
Okay, I got all my pieces cut and I'm gonna stain them tonight and then I will see you tomorrow and we will do Craig Jig stuff. Good morning, it is a new day and I am feeling a lot better and I just want to, I don't even feel like I need to apologize but if you're trying to watch this video and it's feeling kind of confusing and all over the place, it's because I have been feeling a little all over the place. Yeah, yesterday was really frustrating, like from the stain not really being the right color to cutting stuff haphazardly and just realizing that I needed to slow everything down when I feel like I'm in a rush right now just because I'm, I'm kind of on a time crunch, which has also led me to decide that I'm not going to put in the floor before I leave my house here. So... I don't know, this video and then the flooring video might be all over the place, so please just bear with me. Um, I am doing my best right now. Fortunately, the stain turned out really nice. It's kind of got this aged look to it. It is the dark walnut stain by Verithane. The one I got yesterday was Provincial by Verithane, and it actually, the testing strip at the store looked like how this dark walnut stain looks like on, what is it called? Plywood. <laughs> Um, so I ended up getting the color I wanted. It was just a different stain. I actually bought a bunch of stuff online yesterday, buying a, a rivnut tool or a swiveling rivet tool that punches threaded rivets into the wall so that I can anchor my garage walls in that way rather than using sheet metal screws because I've just heard that they can break and they can come out over time. And Linnea and Akila, they were using these rivet tools and they look really, really sturdy. And I want these walls to be sturdy because my bed's gonna go on top of it. So the goal this morning is going to get these boxes drilled together, set up, figure out how to use the Craig Jig tool and get everything prepped so that when that riveting tool comes, I can just install everything into the walls. So let's get to doing that. I bought the Craig Jig 720 Pro. It was the only one that they had at the store other than the 320. And I ideally wanted to get like the 520, but I figured I might as well just get the really nice one because it's gonna make the work easier. It comes with a bunch of screws and mounting and docking stuff. And it's honestly a really good tool. And I think I'll be happy when I'm doing cabinetry that I, I have the really nice one. Overall, the user manual is extremely user-friendly for getting this set up. I put all of my things together and then drilled a couple of test pocket holes into a scrap piece of plywood just so I got my bearings on how to use it and it was really easy to use. So this is roughly what it's going to look like when it's all done. Um, I'm still waiting for the rivnut tool to come in and that's what I'm going to anchor the wall into this framing piece of the van. I'm just gonna clean up all the debris and dust and wood chip particles so that everything's really clean because once I get this finished today, I'm actually gonna start loading up my van with all the stuff that I have because I'm moving to be continued in another video. All right, this is what the finished product is going to look like. I went ahead and did this side so I could show y'all and kind of speed up the process of everything. These flathead socket screws are where the rivets are. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side now and then we are gonna be done with this project. Okay, so this is my rivnut tool. I just found one online that had pretty good reviews. What you do is you take your rivet and you're going to open this up all the way, thread the rivet on to the mandrel, I believe it's what it's called and then put it into one of these holes and it basically crimps into the hole and makes an anchor. You can see over here, I'm actually gonna be using this one that came with the van. This is where those like tie down things were. It has a rivet in there already that is the M8 size that I need. So I'm gonna be using that and then I'm gonna be making one here. So you've got it open with your rivet already in it and you basically just, you place it into the hole and then Close it, open it back up, and then just screw out the mandrel. And then you got a sweet ass rivet that is super sturdy. I mean, I was messing around with the one that I just finished and it's like extremely durable, which is awesome. I am using metric screws, but the rivnut 
tool that I have also does standard. I just have the ones that are already in the wall and those ones are metric. So I'm using an M830. And the thread size for these are 1.25 and then 30 is the length and I believe that that's in millimeters. These are called flathead socket screws. I had a really hard time finding these in the stores. Ace Hardware had the button head ones, but there was nowhere that had the flathead socket screws in metric. I did find some in standard, so if you're using standard sizing, you might have an easier time finding them. And so with that being said, I have been measuring roughly where these screw holes are gonna be, and then drilling them, and then kind of like looking through the hole and seeing if I can see the threading. It's taken a little bit of finesse and like having to make the holes a little bit bigger, but I definitely recommend measuring them because <clears throat> you don't want your wall to be crooked if you're putting your bed on top of it because then your bed's gonna be crooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and then get the wall in. So for the boxes, I'm going to end up attaching the top first, just putting a couple of screws in each corner. And then I'm going to attach the side to the wall and then do into the floor last, just so I know that the box is completely secured to the wall and there's no gap on the sides. nice little seating area right now while there's nothing else in the van. <laughs> well, that concludes this project. It was overall pretty easy to install, but getting all of the materials and cutting everything, I definitely had like a hard time doing that. I think it was mainly my mental space though. It looks way better than I thought it was going to. Um, something I've noticed that with the jigsaw, and I, I mean, I think it goes without saying, um, the cuts are definitely rougher than they would be with like a circular saw or a table saw. And I was looking at all these pieces that I cut and was like, how am I going to get this together and make it look nice? And it ended up turning out really well. I'm happier with the second stain that I chose and the Rivnut tool and the Craig jig are both like, I think, essential items to have for your van build. So if you're on the fence about getting either of them, I really recommend both. This project ended up costing me around $350. That does include the Craig jig and the Rivnut tool. The Craig jig that I got was like $150 and the Rivnut tool I think was 70. I got the like big boss Craig jig. You can find cheaper Craig jigs for like 30 or 40 bucks. The Rivnut tool that I got though, I really like it. It does feel really durable. I was reading reviews online that some of them feel like really crappy and cheap and you do need something that has a good amount of leverage. You can put a good amount of leverage into. I'll link everything I use in this video down below in case you are building out a van as well. The things I would do differently in this project would be uh, not including as many pocket screws on the sides. I ended up not using them and I don't think I needed them. I also recommend doing your measurements independently of one another. You would think that the left and the right side are gonna be exactly the same and they very well might be like very, very similar, but in terms of like the foam insulation that I put on the wheel well and stuff, the measurements could have ended up being a little bit different. So don't just like cut everything for one side and then use it as a, a template for the other side. I recommend like doing all the individual measurements on their own. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. Please leave me a comment down below or constructive criticism and please consider subscribing if you are new here and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.